Hi, my name is Ron Joyner. I'm an amateur horologist from Greenfield, Nova Scotia. Today I'm working on a Waterbury short drop schoolhouse clock with an 8 inch dial. It's a time only clock. We'll be taking it out of its case, looking it over, determining what needs to be done in terms of servicing. We'll be reassembling the clock, uh, testing it, and then finally putting it back into its case. Okay, let's get started. I've already taken the hands off, and here they are, they're uh, spade hands, minute hand, hour hand, put those aside. I've already taken the screws out of the uh, uh, bezel. Uh, the glass part is uh, held in by two screws, there are five in total. So I've already released the screws, so we'll take that out. And this is the, this is the movement. The movement is held in by, um, by four screws. So we'll release those screws. There's one, two, three, and the fourth screw here. This is a time-only movement. I've never worked on it, and uh, so this is my first time at this movement, even though I've had the, the clock for about uh, five years. Okay. We'll put the case aside. And here's the movement. Okay, so let's just look it over briefly before we um, take it apart. And the one thing that I'm kind of curious about is is the plates here, what the plates are made of. And, uh, and yes, these are steel plates. However, the inserts are brass. So these little inserts here, 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 this is brass part here, um, and also on the other side. These are all the inserts. Okay, so if, the, if this clock does need bushing work, I can drill into the brass inserts and install bushings there. Okay, so that's the time only movement. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let the power down on the mainspring. And I've got uh, a number of uh, clamps here, or straining clips or clamps. And we're going to take one, select one. And I think this should be it right here. Okay, this is it. This should be it. So we will run the spring around the main spring like this. Okay, again, there's only the one spring, and then we'll take a let down, we'll take a, a let down tool, and we shall uh, release the click here. Let me see, I haven't seen this type of click before, so let me see what I'm got here. Okay. Release the, the spring. And then we'll take this. Well, these things are always uh, a little tricky, but Okay, so we'll take that, just to be sure. The spring is now let down. We'll start disassembling the uh, movement. And we'll start with uh, taking the 
suspension spring off. There we go. Putting that aside. And then we have the crutch and verge. Okay, so no, no power going to it. So we will take the four pillar nuts and we'll loosen those. in our tray. Yep. I'm thinking this movement was made after the uh, First World War. As I mentioned, 1920s, it could be the 1930s. Uh, and the steel plates are telling me that it makes sense because um, there's a shortage of brass and several clock companies had already um, decided to use steel plates so this is not so unusual okay so we'll take the top plate off and we'll take the verge out here Top plate off, and uh, there's not much to it. I mean, there's this actually. I thought at first it would be attached to the second wheel here, but actually, this third wheel is attached to this wheel. I, I got to admit, I've never seen anything quite like that before. Okay. The other thing I noticed too is this screw here, and uh, never quite seen that. Usually there's a pin and a washer, so now we have a screw and a washer. Hmm. So screw and a washer, and then this comes off. The uh, power pipe. Now, uh, this is where I'm going to stop because this is a friction fit and unless the screw is here, which is kind of unusual. Oh, so there is some slippage here. Yeah, okay. This is stationary here, but this huge, uh, I'm going to call it a huge washer below, it moves so there's always a bit of slippage on this clutch. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take that off. No, I'm not going to take it off. Now, coming back to the movement here, so we have the escape wheel which is very dirty. Lots of oil on it. So now watch this. That's how much oil is on this thing. And then we have this uh, third wheel, which kind of is not the third wheel. Anyways, so this is and then, of course, the second wheel here. Okay. All right. And, of course, the uh, mainspring, which is... Uh, it's kind of a big spring for a small clock. And we will take that off, this, the mainspring, and service that. And uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. This uh, top plate with the motion works and this, I'm going to call it a second wheel. 
because it is, uh, on the uh, main uh, harbor. And it says 89 on here. I wonder if that means 89 teeth. Is it loose? Uh, it's a little loose, but it's not troubling. Okay. I'm going to uh, clean up the pivots a little bit and see what we have in terms of bushing wear. Pivots actually look good. Put everything but the uh, everything but the mainspring back on. See what kind of wear we have. Okay, so Okay, got all the wheels in except for the paint spring. And we'll just test them and see just what's happening in terms of wear. Okay, I am getting a little bit of wear here. So, yeah. let me see if I can just demonstrate that a little bit. There's just a little bit of movement in that wheel. Right there. Okay, let's see if there's a... That should take care of any movement here. Okay, let me see here. I actually am getting some movement here. Okay, so that would be that. I'm going to call it third third wheel here, or the fourth wheel perhaps. Anyway, so there's a little bit of movement there, and perhaps here. So here, here, and and here. So three bushings for this uh, time-only movement, which is not bad considering its age. Spring, I don't know, it does not look original. I'm not sure that this could also be a homemade fix because, I mean, a manufacturer would line up this part of the spring to the height of this. So I'm thinking this is, might be homemade. This ends uh, part one of a two-part series on a Waterbury short drop. And in part two, we'll look at uh, cleaning the uh, parts at uh, pegging the movement out, uh, in other words, cleaning out the bushing holes, polishing the uh, pivots, and, uh, and doing the bushing work. In this case, three bushings are required. Uh, after which, we'll reassemble the clock and then test it. 
uh, for a short period, one or two cycles. It's an eight-day clock, so uh, test it for a, an eight-day cycle. And, uh, and that should uh, conclude um, the servicing of the movement. Thanks for watching.